I'm Jared Kimber, and welcome to the Super Over. I've got Gareth Batty with me today. Well, let's start with this. Uh, we didn't know that it would be a good day for Ospin, or to be fair, in India it quite often is. But it wasn't Ravi Chandwin Ashwin today. It wasn't Gareth Batty. It was, a, it was Washington Sundar. Tell me about his bowling and what excited you, Gareth Batty. Uh, the most exciting thing was it's the first time we've, we've seen him um, in Test cricket for a period of time, or certainly the first time I have. And he's obviously gone away and he's worked um, at evolving his game. His strength of ball was magnificent. It looked like he'd just spent a bit more time on his right foot, so he had uh, a bit more mechanical um, skill uh, working for him. He was able to go over the ball with overspin, square spin. But he also used the information that would have been passed on with somebody like yourself, the analyst, to work out how he's going to dismantle and how he's going to ball to each New Zealand batter that came in. And it wasn't fluke that he got the uh, 7 for 59. I thought he he dismantled a couple of batters and he he, he bowled some beautiful balls to, to do a couple of others. So I thought it was a wonderful day for him. What what was your favourite ball of his? A Blundell or um, a Ratchet and Ravindra? Oh, you can pick another one, but you'd be wrong. No, I'm, I'm going. Um, I'm going Blundell purely because it was two balls, not the one. The f the ball before he just held him about off stump, just outside off stump, but not quite as as far across as as fourth off stump, just to do him on the outside edge. And then he bowled a similar line with that beautiful. As the ball started to drop, it had a little bit of cut out just to open that gap up and then fizz through the gate. It was a beautiful piece of bowling. Uh, there was another off-spinner today. Uh, they combined for all of the wickets. Ashwin bowled when the pitch really wasn't spinning all that much. And uh, when Washington brought, came back on his spell, again, it wasn't spinning that much. And then from that point onwards, we saw a lot of turn. But I thought we saw great signs from Ashwin today as well. Yeah, he bowled beautifully. And it was uh, the Ashwin of old that got out to Tom Latham early on. It's what we expect to see from him. Uh, skip into the pad, skip into the pads, and then get one to hold straight down those tram lines, giving out LBW, beautiful piece of bowling. Um, and then he worked very hard for his other wickets. Uh, I thought it was a nice ball that got young. You know, some people say he's got lucky with it going down the leg side, but I don't. I think that cut again you, is you what you want to see. You planned for it. You said they said yeah, it's going to go out. I think so, because he, he gets a bit wrong side of the ball, so that cut in again. It's just from a straighter line, that's all. Uh, so I thought that was a nice piece of bowling. Brilliant from uh, short leg to be saying, you must review this. He's definitely got mm. a glove on it, so he takes a bit of credit there. Uh, and then he deserved that little bit of luck to Conway, where a ball that was outside off stump, six off stump, and he sort of fences at it as opposed to thrashing it or leaving it alone. You weren't that right from... Uh, the accumulative balls leading up to that point. Uh, talk to us about Conway. Uh, we've seen him make runs twice in the three innings he's batted so far. He struggled in the second inning. He struggled in the start of this one, but then came good after a while. Yeah, he fought through a difficult period because um, we saw some big spin at times and it certainly wasn't every ball. So you have to be very clear on having a good bat path. Basically down off stump and, and middle stump, which he did. He kept his pads out of the way. He was able to create a good alignment. And he was prepared to play and miss every now and again. But as soon as it came into pads, he was able to knock it. Had a couple of good sweeps, reverse sweep, just to change the field. And he saw through those tough periods. And it wasn't sort of that uh, crash bang wallop that seems to the modern way. It was through grit. It was through skill. And it was through precision. So it was a wonderful performance from him. I think it was 141 balls. So, you know, time in the middle was also uh, quite crucial. And uh, just a word on Ravindra's innings as well. Yeah, I mean, he's one for the future, isn't he? He's a, he's a lovely player. He, he reminds me very much of uh, Kumar Sangakara, the way that he sets up. Um, he has different gears. He's able to run down the pitch and bop them out of the ground to move a fielder to make it easier to score. He doesn't thrash the ball. He's very precise in how he plays. He can trust his defence. Uh, unfortunately, he got one heck of a ball from Washington Sundar today. You could criticise it fractionally and say there was a little bit of a kink in the back path, but I think we're being hypercritical on a man that really does have a very good game plan and is able to adapt to what he's coming at different periods throughout his innings. And I thought it was magnificent today. They've ended up being bowled out under 300. The pitch was pretty flat for a long time, Bats. And then around the, I don't know, 58th over, it's just started ragging sideways a little bit there. It still seems like a pretty good surface to me. Uh, there certainly runs in it. Um, but I think there are also periods where you can get on top as a, as a bowler. And, and I think it was the last spell, I think, um, sort of 40 overs. I think it was six for 70 or something that India um, bowled New Zealand out for. That's the thing really to try and avoid in India. You don't want those massive collapses. But it, it's the way that the surfaces go. You generally lose a wicket and you lose two. Uh, so can you extend on periods when you're playing well and they had a couple of great partnerships where if they could have just extended another 20 or 30 runs potentially it would have been significant further down the line they couldn't extend and India were able to take the wickets um, so I certainly think there's runs in it but there's certainly something for the uh, particularly the spinners but I think all bowlers to work with
Do you think there's more than 259 runs in it? If India bat very well, yes. But if New Zealand bowl like they finished today, mm. and it will be different tomorrow because it's not that sort of close of play um, emotions that were going around and, and sort of pressure. Tomorrow you've got 90, 90 overs to, 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 to negotiate. As and, from and, New and the Zealand. ball's a bit older as well now. Yeah, but I, I think that works for you and against you all in the same breath. So yes, it will do it quicker and bounce a bit more with a, with a newer ball that we've seen tonight. But also it becomes a bit more turgid with an older ball. So you get more dots potentially if you bowl well. So it's just about New Zealand managing the periods of play. Um, but also India have that ability to come very hard and take the game away very quickly, which is super exciting for everybody watching. That's Gareth Barry. I'm Jared Kimber. This is a super over and we'll see you again tomorrow. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.